What I've got for you today is supposed to be an amazing game of Terran versus Protoss. Spotting right here on the top right hand corner of the map, Data C, playing with the yellow Protoss probes from Germany. We have none other than Showtime and his opponent in his match of StarCraft 2 with the purple Terran SCVs from South Korea. We are looking at Maru's main command center. Alrighty, so yesterday I uploaded that amazing game between Showtime and Serral. If you haven't seen that Zerk vs. Protoss yet, I'll go ahead and post a link to it down below the description of this video. Honestly, an amazing game of StarCraft 2. Highly recommend you go check it out after watching this cast, because... After that ZVP was played at TSL 9, this particular game took place. And I kid you not, several of you reached out, and thank you, by the way, for recommending games of StarCraft for me to go ahead and cast, but several of you reached out to me and mentioned that this Terran vs. Protoss, they use these words, okay? They called this particular Terran vs. Protoss the game of the year. <laughs> now, at this point, I have titled two videos... In the course of eight days, game of the... So I can't, okay? I can't. I need to wait at least two weeks. Maybe three weeks. So I'm hoping that something spicy takes place in this game that will uh, allow me to create a, uh, a pretty decent title to these videos, right? I mean, I would... If, if it was up to me, I mean, I guess it is. But I would title this video something along the lines of Maru versus Showtime, right? That would be really nice. But I've done that in the past, and those videos just don't perform particularly well. But anyways, what I'm getting at is that apparently this game of TVP is amazing. So, we're gonna find out together exactly what ended up going down between these two legends. Showtime, of course, a very, very good macro Protoss, incredibly consistent. He's been playing this game since basically forever, and he's pretty much always been one of the very best Protoss players in the world. Maru, in case you're unfamiliar, which I find hard to imagine if you've watched any StarCraft 2, but Maru is the very best player from South Korea, and some players argue that he's the very best player in StarCraft 2 ever. This guy's ridiculous, okay? If Showtime is the Mauer, right? If he is the wall, Maru is like um <laughs> He's like a cockroach. That doesn't sound like a compliment, okay? But bear with me. Maru, Maru is so good that he can literally live without his own head for like a week. This guy right here can survive without any food for like a month. He can quite literally live through a nuclear explosion, okay? So Maru, he's he's incredibly good when it comes to playing StarCraft 2. Although that being said. His Terran versus Protoss, I mean, it's gonna sound, it's, I mean, this is, this is, this whole set, this whole sequence doesn't sound like a set of compliments, but anyways, his Terran versus Protoss is definitely his weakest matchup, if you compare it to his Terran versus Terran and his Terran versus Zork. First I called him a cockroach, now I called him that at TVP. Anyways, what, <laughs> what I'm trying to get at is that Maru's, okay, so his play style that he likes to go for is incredibly oppressive, right? So either he gobbles up the entire map and he expands everywhere and he just simply turtles super hard, or he goes for that ridiculous multitasking. And against someone like Showtime's play style, right? Or against someone like Showtime, it's incredibly hard to actually pull something like that off successfully. In Terran versus Terran, you can definitely find a lot of success. In Terran versus Zerk, you can both turtle as well as do that insane multitasking. But as long as Showtime is in the right place at the right time, he really shouldn't take a lot of damage from Maru's early game. And because of that, he can force the game to go to distance. And that's kind of where I like Showtime's position quite a bit. Anyways, ends up losing one Adept here. Since a lot of people recommended this game to me, I'm assuming it's a really good one. Ooh, okay, he does get the Hellion. I was gonna say, I don't think we're gonna see him dying here because of those first couple of adepts. Either way, he decided to once again go for that Oracle opener. I mean, just to clarify, right? Maru's Terran for Protoss is still godlike. It's, it's maybe his worst matchup, but it's still, you know, amongst the very best in the world. It's just not as dominant as his TVT it is TVT. Anyhow, it's gonna once again be that Oracle opener. This is, of course, Showtime. This is like the middle-of-the-road sort of opener where you can scout your opponent, you can figure out what they're trying to do, so he sees the Widow Mines, he sees the Medivac drop coming in right now as well, he knows what he's going up against. But on top of that, you can use this unit as well a little bit later on into the game to provide detection, to get additional scouting, and obviously you can even harass your opponent too, believe it or not. He's slowing down this Medivac drop, which is super nice. Yeah, okay, Maru even decides to return back home. I was gonna say, if you're delayed that much, by the time that you get across the map, there's gonna be, uh, yeah, multiple Phoenixes out, it's gonna be super hard to get any sort of damage in. There are a lot of Widow Mines in this game, by the way. Yeah, we're already up to six. So, Maru trying to play one of his cheaper tricks, okay, where... He's crossing his fingers and he's hoping that our Protoss here is gonna fly into those Widow Mines and that he's gonna end up losing a bunch of units. He's obviously well familiar with Showtime. Showtime is not gonna make that mistake, but... 
especially at a big tournament like the TSL 9. This game was played at that event, right? As an offline tournament, so I believe that the players were quite literally sitting opposite each other. So if they looked over their monitors, they could see the opponent, right? Maybe you can see Maru winking where he looks right next to your monitor. Anyway, you want to be careful. Sometimes it's very easy to get a little bit carried away and, yeah, just YOLO in the Oracle. But a bit of a skill check right there from Maru. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. You can actually see this, right, as Protoss, if you... Uh, once again, <laughs> he's clumping all of the Widow Mines up together. Trying to get Shota to fly into it. It shouldn't happen. Look at this bait! Maru. A master at baiting. You love to see that. Years of practice. Okay, sorry. Sorry. I'm not saying particularly nice things about Maru in this cast, dude. All of these things sound like compliments in my head, but I'm pretty sure if I listen back to my own cast... Like, that happens sometimes, actually, that I listen back to my own cast, and I sound like such a jerk. Whereas, in my mind, while commentating the game, I was giving the, you know, the player compliments, and I was being such a nice guy. Anyways, sometimes my words don't quite match my thoughts. This probably is one of those casts, where I call him a cockroach, I call him bad at TVP, I say that he's a master... Anyways, it's... It's it was all it was all meant right, okay? It was it was meant in a nice way. So far, by the way, fantastic start here for Showtime. Careful for that widow mine. Alright, that one is gonna fire, so he ends up losing one of the Phoenixes. Also ends up losing the Oracle. That is now a little bit less fortunate, but he ended up sniping the Metavec as well as a bunch of those widow mines, which was good. Right now I know I I guess he's kind of evened it up, right? Maru sniping a couple of those units, especially getting the Oracle was really, really nice. But it's gonna be hard for the Terran here to do any yeah, follow-up damage here for the time being. I mean, he is going to finish up... I'm assuming he... Yeah, okay, I was going to say, I didn't see the Stimpak on the production tab, but... He's going to finish up the plus one uh, infantry weapons. He's going to get combat shields, concussive shells, the whole shebang. The thing is, with the Phoenixes still out on the battlefield, they're going to lift up these siege tanks. And if you take those units out of the equation, this Terran army is really not that strong. And by the time that Maru will have a strong enough army to push across the map, the Colossus is going to be out. So Phoenix into Colossus, very common opener in TVP for that exact reason. It's hard for the Terran player to attack into it. And by the time that they can finally attack, there's going to be Colossi out. And yeah, the Colossus is a pretty good contender when it comes to dealing with Marines. Good start right here for Showtime. Maybe not amazing after losing that Oracle and the Phoenix, but definitely looking stellar. Just surviving the early game is quite sweet. And look at that, look at that minimap patrolling here as well, right? There's units basically all over the map. We saw that same thing happening actually in uh, Showtime's game against Serral, where he was the one deciding the pacing of the game, and he was the one out expending Serral. Which is kind of cool, like... It's really shifted, the Protoss meta, I guess, over the last half year or so. Ever since Hero... Well, maybe it's a little bit more, maybe it's like nine months at this point, but anyways. Ever since Hero figured out how you can fast expend against Zerg, it seems like Protosses have been doing the same thing as well in the other matchups. Maybe to a lesser extent, but... This is still, for all intents and purposes, a pretty quick fourth nexus. And when you think about it, there's not really that much that Terran can really do about it. I mean, obviously Data C is a bit of a turtle map. Pretty much all of the long games of Terran that have taken place so far in this new map pool, they've all happened on Data C. Uh, he's got a scan again, okay. Yeah, it's pretty easy for, well, I guess especially Terran to take a lot of these bases, right? And from there you can take the fifth. Depending on which location you like, usually this is the favorite position. Uh, but anyways, you can take uh, five, six bases relatively easily. And there's not that much that the opponent can do about it. But if it's up to Showtime, he's gonna try. Probably gonna try and go after that. Yep. One little Widow Mine over there too. Even though apparently one of the Usurpers got sniped, there's a new one already available once more. Ooh, it's running away. Flying units can run. Did you know that? It's one of the top 10 things that science can't explain. Plus 2, plus 2 coming up here for Maru. That's usually where we see Terrans are really starting to get aggressive. I mean, he doesn't necessarily have to, but I'm assuming Maru is probably going to put his foot down on the gas as soon as 2, 2 finishes. This is a... Uh, well, maybe he'll move out before that too. Or maybe it's going to be Showtime who's actually going to decide the pacing here. Showtime is finishing up ground weapons level 1 right now. He's got a pretty formidable army. There's one center here in the mix, and there are ghosts out already, so one good EMP can definitely slow down his army quite a bit. Not a whole lot of anti-air available just yet here for Maru, only three Vikings. He's gonna pump out two of those at once, but when 2-2 two -two finishes, I think that Showtime needs to be very careful. He's already maxed out. He's going for another Nexus all the way in the bottom right hand corner. That's like a nine minute 
fifth Nexus against Terran, which is pretty wild. I think you can really only do this against Maru, right? Maru in this sort of game is definitely passivity itself. His main strategy was to cross his fingers and hope his opponent was gonna walk into the Widow Mines. And other than that, he's been trying to, yeah, sit back and just macro up as hard as he can. Good read here so far by the Protoss. But now 2-2 is finished. So if Terran wanted to go for a move, if they wanted to take an engagement, right now might very well be the time. Then again, it is Maru. <laughs> if anyone is, yeah, comfortable sitting back, it's probably him. But I am starting to get a little bit concerned, though. Because I think Showtime is, yeah, putting his opponent on that strategy as well. He's saying, okay, if you want a turtle on four bases, that works for me. I'll take a fifth. I'll take a sixth. The ball is on your court. I really don't need to do a whole lot. As long as I keep you contained, I might add six bases, you might add four. You don't have to be a great mathematician to figure out who's going to be in uh, an advantage at that point. Sensor tower positioning here is really good, though. He constantly sees that army. Good EMPs as well. Softening up this Protoss force quite a bit, but he does need to be careful. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of area here, right, for the Terran player to engage. You'd imagine lowering the supply depots would probably make that engagement a bit easier. Anyways. Okay. One ghost a little bit too far forward, and we're blinking backwards once again. Honestly, fantastic game so far here for Showtime, right? He's killing a bunch of SCVs in the main base, too. This uh, one zealot has now killed eight workers, nine workers. Not bad at all. Eventually, the hero zealot goes down, but... Yeah, beautiful contain right here by Showtime. Okay, we're gonna once again engage. A couple of good lifts off. Oh, lift offs right there on those siege tanks. A couple of very nice disruptor balls too. This one came out of left field for some reason. But 17 SCVs once more end up going down. Showtime's traits aren't necessarily very cost efficient, but keep in mind he's mining significantly more than his opponent too. It adds up very quickly. Command center may actually fall. Okay, he could try and target it down if he really wants to. SCVs right there in a lot of trouble. 23 extra end up going down here. This is really starting to be an issue here. Showtime, <laughs> 96 probes into this game. Maybe we need to come up with a different nickname. Maybe the man is no longer a wool. All right. Maru plays more like a wool in this game than Showtime is. Showtime is just trying to, uh, yeah, out macro his opponent to the best of his abilities. Once again, beautiful detonation there. Those purification novas are really hurting Maru. And Maru may very well be reconsidering the strategy that he started off with in this particular match. There's the seventh Nexus coming up. There's a spotter unit over here at the potential fifth base for Maru. And I think that's what Showtime is waiting for, right? He just keeps poking over here. He keeps dealing damage. And he knows very well, if my opponent is on four bases, I really don't need to... Yeah, I don't really need to do much. We can, we can just trade units back and forth. It'll work out just fine. He's making a lot of zealots, by the way. Already 70 Zealots have gone down. 17 more are on the... No, 19 more are on the battlefield. We're already going upwards of nearly 100 of those Zealots. But it makes sense. He didn't take the gases in those newly acquired bases, right? He's just taking the minerals. So he's using that mostly to his advantage. And uh, yeah, he's making a lot of Zealots. Plus three, plus three is going to finish up for those bad boys very soon as well. We're mixing in some Archons too, because it turns out with six gas guys, there should still get some gas income too. But this is Maru up with his back against the wall. Uh, with his back against Showtime, I guess. All right, once again. Ooh, Purification Nova is dealing a lot of damage. Units over here are still alive though for the Terran player. But honestly, this is... Ah, uh, never mind. I was going to say, this seems like Showtime is steamrolling through it. Marines and Marauders, though, still providing a lot of utility. They are going to pick up and get on out of there. Okay. So this is where we can see the Cockroach style really coming into play, though. Because many a Terran player would have already died. And I know that this is a long game of Terran versus Protoss. So I know that this game is not going to end right here, right now. But... I think the majority of Terran players at this point would have already died. I'm taking uh, nickname suggestions, by the way. I think we could probably do better than Cockroach. Maybe we can do better than the Mauer as well, if this is the way that Showtime is currently playing StarCraft. This is like the opposite of a wall, man. This guy is, is flexible. 
He's just uh, expanding all over me. Yeah, take another one. Sure, why not? It's like a crescent moon of Nexi on the minimap. Um, I'm really getting concerned here for Maru. Problem is, Maru is running out of money. He can still max out here. But that's really about it. Yeah, look at the bases. Getting oversaturated here in the main. Natural is oversaturated. Third and fourth are running out of minerals too. There's gonna have to be a move here from the Terran player here very soon. Okay, so an orbital command was made. Maru probably wants to go for a planetary over here next. But how in the world is he going to secure that, right? Like, how in the world is he going to pull that off? Either he has to unseat all of his units. Well, I mean, this is one choke point that... Ooh, the Terrans definitely don't mind fighting into. Yeah, I'm not sure about that engagement there, Showtime. Okay, once again, some decent purification novas. Colossus ends up going down as well here eventually. Another Disruptor Falls. That was a little bit of an overextension, huh? That's what Maru was waiting for. This should buy him enough time immediately he moves over there. This should buy him enough time to make another base here happen. At the very least, potentially. It's the best case scenario, I think. Kills one of the next side. That was the eighth base. At the same time, some Dark Templar moves in over here, but Shadow Strike not available just yet. Makes it difficult for them to actually get a proper engagement in. And I wonder if those DTs aren't going to be necessary at home. Okay, another base ends up going down. Maru has seen the base in the top left, so he knows that that one is up and running too. Dark Templar are going to make it difficult for this command center to land, and indeed, Maru is going to have to make the, the flight of shame back towards that previous base. He's engaging, though, once again, all over the map. The majority of the Terran army is now in the top left-hand corner, although reinforcements are clearing out the units here that Showtime is trying to attack with. 17 additional zealots going up. My god, we're going for a lot of zealots. All right, let's see how many zealots this guy can make. Maybe that's going to be the title of this video. Shota makes 200 plus zealots. Right? That would be a good title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maru's actually ridiculous, though. Like, wasn't he dead like three minutes ago? If you skip forward in this game... We were talking four base Terran versus seven base Protoss. Shotan with a bank, Maru at like 170 supply. What just happened here? This is something that Maru regularly does in his games. Okay, well maybe he got a little bit overly aggressive though because now those Zealots are getting on top of all of these units and this is starting to hurt. Even though they're kind of derping out in the back. Yeah, it's not the most beautiful trait now, is it? Anyways, yeah. Gotta be careful. You don't want to get too crazy. Disruptor coming in from the north as well. Apparently... This guy only got the fire once. <laughs> Protoss and Terran accidentally have become next door neighbors. Planetary Fortress at this point is done though, and that's really quite nice. Having that anchor to fall back to here as a Terran is fantastic. Still not liking this situation for Terran a whole lot, but liking it more than, you know, I did a few minutes ago. I don't think that this Nexus is gonna happen. I don't really see how you're going to be able to keep that alive. Ah, dude, Maru actually now grabbing a lead when it comes to the supply count. It's pretty wild. <laughs> okay, we're going to continue warping in Zealots. Yes, dude. Dude, we're already at 200 Zealots. Yeah, we're already there. Okay, Command Center ends up going down. Right? Yes. Zealots are being shot at by the siege tanks here continuously. The backbone of Maru's army here. Well, there might be another orbital that falls in this exact same position. That is definitely nice here. Ooh. <laughs> that is definitely nice here for the Protoss. Disruptors there got killed before the Purification Nova finished channeling. He's going back into Colossus production right now. Small little hit squad moving on over towards the, uh, towards the bottom right hand corner. Recall is going to be utilized here on the majority of the Protoss army, so Terran decides to back off. Slowly but surely, Maru is extending his arms here, right? His siege tank arm in this game. He's spreading the units as thinly as he dares to. Obviously, if you spread them too thin, you might accidentally get overwhelmed. Or one of your outer bases will end up getting destroyed. Showtime taking back the top left hand corner, it seems. I think that makes a lot of sense, but you gotta be careful, right? If you give... If you give Maru here all of these bases, you're gonna be in a lot of trouble.
Maru is such a legend. So, Showtime's strategy was to overwhelm the Terran. That is still his strategy right now. He hasn't really transitioned away from this playstyle. So he's got a relatively low-tech army at this point in the game. He doesn't have Storm, he doesn't have further upgrades, he doesn't have a Skytals transition or anything along those lines coming up. This is basically what we have right here from our Protoss player. And while it's pretty great against 4 base Terran, I'm not exactly sure how efficient it's gonna be against 5 base Terran. Because Maru's army here is still getting, yeah, it's still getting stronger, right? There's a chance we're gonna see Maru transitioning towards that Mass Liberator army here very soon. I mean, it's kind of tricky to pull that transition off against someone who's going for the Mass, you know, Zealot Stalker Ball, but... If Maru can get enough Liberators out, he is going to be in a phenomenal spot. And honestly, maybe he doesn't even need it. He's pushing through right now, sniping all of the Disruptors. Colossus running low. S yeah, Prism gets sniped out of the sky as well. Couple of Libs are already out. And yeah, he goals up another base. We do need to see a scan over here. One Dark Templar, okay, pretending to be a Zealot. I mean, when you think about it, Dark Templar are basically Zealots with higher DPS and, like, cloaking, right? Anyhow, 204 Zealots down so far this game. 12 Dark Templar. Not bad at all. Here we go again. We have a Zealot drop right on top of the Siege Tanks, trying to take those out. They've been the bane in the existence of Showtime here so far. Very aggressive warp in Showtime going in for what seems to be the killer move. He wants to try and win this game right here, right now. Marauders at this point, though, fully upgraded. They absolutely pack a punch, and they can certainly also lift through quite a few of these hits. Excellent stutter step micro right there from the Korean Terran player. He does end up losing a bunch of SCVs here. But he definitely did not lose a lot of the Marauders. Okay. Yeah, Showtime trying to kill a cockroach by, you know, just slapping it a bunch of times. Spoiler alert. Not a great strat. <laughs> I, you know, it works well, but... Not against someone like Maru. Oh my god, really? Oh, okay. Showtime's like, you know what? Can't take your army on very well, but what about... We just ignore the siege tanks entirely and we just walk into your natural expansion. Honestly, this seems like a little bit of an overextension, no? Colossus... Oh my god, marching across as well. That one is super dead. Ah, uh, I don't like this move too much. Still, yeah, recoil is going to be used right now. I think that this prism will probably get picked off too. I'm assuming... Okay. Yeah, Terran did notice that the prism snuck towards the back. I don't like this position for Showtime very much anymore. This is what Maru does. The guy's ridiculous. So you blink twice and suddenly he's got all these bases taken. It's a very brave, a <laughs> little brave SCV over here. Right next to a pylon. Ah, well, Protoss though still has a lot of bases too. Oh. Prism actually lives. Don't know how that prism lives. Maybe the Liberator Control Group got pulled back. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> I sent you here to die, so you're gonna die. Poor, poor Colossus. One of them got rallied in, the other one just ran to its death. Anyhow, Planetary Fortress, a dead finish up. Or, well, Command Center did finish up. It's growing a little Planetary Fortress hat right now. Hmm. Not bad. Yeah, but Maru is definitely back in his game right now. How many zealots are we on? 254 already? Sorry, guys. I know you're all mighty warriors in that. I know you guys literally have swords for arms. But, um, you are warped in. Like a Zerkling. You are not given a name. You don't really matter too much. You're just a means to an end. Hate to break it to you all. With the style that Showtime is playing in this game, he is ready to sacrifice you at a moment's notice. Building armor coming up. I actually like building armor in this game a lot. I think it's a great upgrade to get. 
Getting some additional sustain on your structures, not a bad idea considering the amount of structures that have gone down so far. Maru has taken the bottom right hand corner. Okay, maybe Shotem can slow down one of these. We don't mind here, but I think that the DPS is gonna... Okay, it is gonna be a little too much. Don't know what that sound was. <laughs> Coming out of my head. Anyways, um, he does snipe the base, but at the cost of like a dozen DTs, and that's a little bit spicy. Showtime in the meantime also ends up losing a Nexus over here, as well as the one that we just saw explode. So two for one, not ideal. Okay. So what do we do from here, uh, Showtime? Are we ever gonna tech up? I don't think we're gonna tech up. I don't think this is a game where you tech up. I think this is a game where you just make more of the same unit. An absolute brawl of a game. Yeah, sure. A couple of zealots get nipped there as well, but at the very least the siege tanks ended up going down. Marines of Marauder are still available. The ghosts also dealing a lot of damage. This game is a bloodbath and a half. Massacre on Data C. Ridiculous. <laughs> so many units. 56,000 minerals worth of Protoss units have gone down in the last 26 minutes. Maru slowly starting to gobble up the map. In the meantime though, okay, there's an orbital command over here. Sure, the SCVs can get a scan. They can see what they're being killed by, but I don't think that's particularly useful. Siege tanks are gonna gun down those units, so that's something. But I honestly don't mind that trade too much here for uh, for Maru. As long as he can mine these bases, he's gonna be fine. How many orbitals do we have? Well, we only got five. That's really not too much. I guess it's because we've seen a couple of them go down. Yeah. Two and then also two planetaries. So he could have had like five. Uh, he could have had like five plus like four probably or so at this point. That would have been a little bit better here for sure. At that point you don't even really need SCVs anymore. Speaking of which. We're at 90 probes versus 26 SCVs. So supply counts here are a little bit deceiving. The little sort icon over here indicates the army supply. So Maru, 98 army supply versus 86 on the side of the Protoss. So even though Maru has been behind in supply for quite a while, he has a very sizable army and he's mining with mules, right? So his income really isn't that bad. I mean, it's not great, <laughs> but you know, it's not as bad as the 20-something SCVs would suggest. Another thing to note is that Showtime is starting to run out of cash. He's got a lot of mineral fields, sure. There's still quite a bit of mining here too. But if he continues this for another 5 to 10 minutes, these bases are going to be dried up. Maybe not so much this one. This one still probably has like 12, 13 minutes remaining. But these, yeah, they're going to be out. And that's gonna certainly make it difficult to mine with 90 workers. Already, Showtime is long distance mining the final couple of resources in this base. Unable to really put down another Nexus there. Maru does see a little blip on the radar every once in a while, so... He knows that there's some movement happening, but... He's gonna leave it alone, it seems. Alright. Looks like both players are making a bit of a pit stop. Not really playing too aggressively here for a bit. Sitting back, relaxing, macroing up once again, and I believe that suits Maru just fine. Showtime has had his foot on the gas for the entirety of this match. He's gonna continue once again now that he's maxed out once more. He doesn't want to give the Terran player too much time. No planetary over here on the low ground, and I wonder if that's a mistake. Massive Widowmine detonation though from the north. Okay. Well, what little SCV count and what small Commencer account that Maru had, he ends up losing quite a bit of it once again. Six SCVs ended up going down here, or sorry, probes ended up going down here to that one Widow Mine on the left side. That's okay. I think Showtime doesn't really need any more workers. Immediately though, upon uh, losing that base and losing those SCVs, Showtime is under attack here by the Terran army. Storm is available at this point. Nice moves. Slowing down the progression right there of the Terran army. That being said, Maru once again spread out brilliantly. 
Yeah, this is not really something you can easily get into, dude. Uh, is he gonna try? He is gonna try! I don't know, dude! There are so many siege tanks available! This is another bloodbath. Yeah, this is... I... Mm, I don't think this is the best engagement you can go for Showtime. Probably underestimating the amount of siege tanks available on that high ground. Maru certainly wins that battle, and his reward is getting this Nexus. Is that gonna be enough, though? Is he gonna try and move onwards? I was gonna say, yeah, I don't think that... Yeah, it's gonna be all he wants. He wants to have another Nexus. He wants to continuously deal damage here to our Protoss. In the meantime, bottom right and corner taken here. That expansion is also being reacquired. High yield gas, mining out. Showtime's piggy bank has been smashed at this point. He doesn't have a lot of money anymore. He's at 149 supply. That's not bad at all, but it's still 10 army supply behind Maru. Uh, okay. Good splits right there by the Korean. Another orbital though ends up going down. My god, we have seen so many command centers going down. This is ridiculous. How many zealots? 339 zealots. <laughs> what? Okay. Not bad. Not bad at all. Um, there's very little money remaining on this map. This is one of the last bases that still has a good amount of resources. Storm? Oh, good EMP. Very nice hits there. Yeah, both of those disruptors ended up going down as well as the High Templar. Can we get another EMP? No. Gonna see a snipe instead. Man. I always like to do a step back whenever I cast these games after a bit. 12 years of StarCraft 2. Game still getting better. These guys are so incredibly evenly matched. It's ridiculous. We're now more than a half hour into this game, and I don't know who wins. I believe that Showtime's position here is better. But he's only really mining off of like six mineral fields and all of them are running out. However, Maru at the same time is only mining off of like four mineral fields, but he does still have a base over here. I actually wouldn't mind if Terran decided to take this expansion in that location, right? Grabbing more resources is so important. Neither player here maxed out, but does he still even have an orbital? Okay, he's got two orbitals remaining. I think it's about time we fly that natural one over. Siege tank ends up going down. Another siege tank hit. Okay. So, one siege tank heavily damaged and two tanks get sniped. Beautiful moves right there by the German Protoss. Really? I'm surprised at the Dark Templar. Oh, they probably think that this base is up. Okay, so this is an important scout actually for Showtime. Showtime must realize that Maru is dead broke. He's got even less income right now than you do. Okay, controlling this high ground makes a lot of sense. Good moves right here by Showtime. Once again, grabs a couple units. But first and foremost, makes it difficult for the Terran to push up. If somehow Showtime can secure that high ground, that would be amazing for him. It's not going to be easy to do, but slow pushing with tanks, you're essentially crossing your fingers and hoping that the Terran player is going to get a good hits in, right? Protoss doesn't need to move down this ramp, and I really like what Showtime's doing here. No reason to get too aggressive. Honestly, Maru's army at this point is bleeding out. This is starting to look like desperation right now to me. Maru moving up towards that high ground, continuously losing units in the process. Every time we see the disruptors bowling forward, they end up sniping something. Very solid lead right now for Showtime. Yes, securing that advantage quite a bit. I would love to see a Dark Templar moving on over towards the bottom right corner, but I guess Showtime assumes that that expansion has been mined out. Good pickups right there by Maru. All right. Oh, aggressive moves right here from Maru once again, trying to go in. This is the point, though, where apparently Showtime, yeah, pulls the trigger. He decides to move forward with his entire army. Every single one of the siege tanks gets sniped. And there it is. Showtime ends up winning over Maru in a 34-minute game of top-level StarCraft. 
Hey, if you enjoyed watching this video, please take the one second that it takes to hit the like button. It really does help. Thank you very much.